things that you have to carry everywhere. It's nice to have something portable that you can open it and, and you just use it, you know? And then it has to be possibly interesting because there's a lot of language learning material that is... Hello YouTube, this is Jan van Laan and today I'm standing here with the one and only Luca Lampariello. Hi. Today uh, we're going to talk about how you can get from a B level to the C levels because as everyone knows uh, Luca speaks 10 or maybe 12 languages at a, I think you speak 10 at a C level or not? I'd say 8. Maybe 8 and he's very humble now because I've seen him speaking all these languages and he's very fluent, um, he almost speaks these languages at a neo-native level. So Luca, how do you do that? How do you do it once you reach <coughs> a B level? How do you go to the sea level? This takes time, or not? Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, thanks for uh, flattering me so much, Jan. <laughs> That's very nice of you, first of all. Mm. Um, yeah, one of the biggest problems that uh, language learners in general face is actually not uh, to get from a beginner's level mm. to uh, an intermediate level, but actually uh, from an intermediate level to an advanced level. That's yeah. the biggest part. Mm. And it takes, it's a long stretch. And, well, mm. basically what happens uh, is this. Um, every time that you learn something, it's language learning is like a mountain. It has a couple of big steps that you have to take. Mm. Uh, for example, when you're an intermediate learner and you want to get over that, you you encounter the biggest step and you hit the so-called plateau. I always say the biggest piece of advice that I can give to learners is first of all, there are two tips. First of all, start, stop doing what you did before and yeah. do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is to try to tackle all areas of language learning at the same time, meaning try to, uh, we're talking about reading, mm -hmm. listening, mm -hmm. speaking and writing. So if you did reading in a certain way at the intermediate level, just start doing it in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an example. If you're an intermediate learner and you're learning, say, Greek, mm. we're in Greece, I'm talking yeah. about Greek, look at the wonderful yeah, exactly. uh, country this is the we chose this view in the yeah. YouTube, the and, YouTube <laughs> videos ever. And you should see the rest, of, like, there's to see, it's, it's, it's amazing. Right well, we just can't show you just one side. Uh, but regardless of that, what I was saying is that if you, for example, you're reading in a certain way, you're reading language learning material, you can, for example, start reading uh, bilingual books or you can start reading real books, authentic material. The same goes for speaking. If you're speaking about normal things of everyday life because yeah. you're an intermediate learner, start speaking about certain things that are more like defined. I see. So, so we're actually saying here is you can do two things. One is by reading more and bilingual using bilingual books. Um, is there yes. like a specific brand of bilingual books that you use? Because uh, is there like, do you have a recommendation of bilingual books that mm, you can... No, but I, I, I can, yes. In France there is, mm. there is a series you can look for. Uh, uh, bouquin bilingue, uh, livre yep. bilingue, you yeah. can write it, but if you write on Google, you're gonna find a, okay. a bunch of these. But yeah, to wrap it all up, it's just stop doing what you did before and do yeah. something else, as Einstein used to say. Yeah. You know, it's craziness to keep doing what you're doing. With, uh, if you wanna have results, you have to change a little bit. Mm. And the other thing, you have to be organic. So you have to read in a different way, you have to start speaking in a different way, you have to even write in a different way. Mm. Uh, and uh, you have to tackle all these um, skills, the four yeah. skills, in a different way. Have yeah. to always get and the third thing mm. that That's relates to the second third thing as well. The okay. third thing which relates to the second one is step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Whenever you found yourself in, mm. uh, if you want to, you want to overcome the plateau, the so-called yep. plateau, you have to do something that you cannot actually do. This is the problem. If you always keep doing what you did before, so that means it's not work. that basically means reading things you can't read, talking about topics that are difficult for you, um, yes. and writing things you 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 not. It was the right about Yes, it. yes, yeah. which leads to the fourth point, which is the most important, do it progressively. You can't yeah. jump and do directly reading about rocket science mm. in a language that you really, mm. not, you're just an intermediate. You have to do it progressively. That's the yeah. reason why I'm saying yeah. bilingual books, then you're gonna start talking about certain specific subjects, yeah. uh, but you don't have to get too, it doesn't have to be too difficult. Yeah. It has to be challenging enough, mm. but it's still enjoyable. Otherwise, you get stuck there in There might process. be a lot of viewers that have learned the language up until, let's say, a B1 or a B2 level who want to reach, to finally reach that C level, how long do you think it would take for an average, like if you if you study almost every day, or let's say a few times a week, like what's feasible here? Is it a matter of a year, two years? How long uh, mm -hmm. do you need to normally to reach a, 
um, a, a, sea, a sea level from the below? It's a very it's a very good question. I think it really depends on a number of factors, your language experience, the number of hours you're going to dedicate it, if you live or don't live in the foreign country, yep. how close this language is to yours. Mm -hmm. Depending on all these stumps, I would say that uh, to get to an advanced level in certain languages, let's I would say, say it's a, a Romance language. For, for let's you. say a spectrum of, if you already speak of, uh, as an Italian, I would say yeah. three to four months of intensive work of like four or five hours a day for a very close language. I mean, we're talking from a B2? From a B2 to, to a C1, C1 yeah. I could range to, six, let's say, a minimum of six months of yeah. really intensive work yeah. to up to three or four, or f I would say two or three years for languages that are uh, kind of distant like Japanese. Yeah. It, the, the stretch between B2 and C1 mm. is huge yeah, compared exactly. with the one the from old, beginner always say to that, intermediate. Yeah, exactly. They always say that the steps from an A1 to an A2 is is what is much smaller than from a B2 it's, to a It's C1. like it's this, you know, and then, then it gets like this, and then it gets like this, and then it gets like this. I like thinking in terms of stretches. There's a really long stretch, but the difference is that once you reach a B2 yeah. and you're on top of the mountain, everything is like a long slope, yeah. but it's easier than just you know, climbing up to yeah. the top. You have to reach a top, which I consider B2. Yeah. And once you get there, you just, it's a long slope, but it's not as difficult as it was before because you start enjoying it using the language. Thank you very much, Luca, for the uh, clarification, for the explanation. Um, if you are learning a language and you have already reached a B2 level, just keep, I think the conclusion of the story here is just keep working hard, don't give up, because uh, to get from a B2 level to a C1 takes time. Yes. That was Jan and Luca from Thessaloniki and see you soon. Take care.